Fokwang Shan Philippines presents The Buddha Way. Our hosts, Mads and Johanna. Oi, Dafo! Happy New Year, everyone! Happy New Year, Johanna! Happy New Year, Mads! Thanks! So, this midnight, we are your hosts for this new online radio program、uh-huh. called The Buddha Way. Johanna, would you like to introduce our listeners to the program? Yep. So thanks, Mads. And we would like our listeners to know that this online program aims to spread the Dharma,、mm-hmm. discuss Buddhist ideas、yes. and the Buddhist way of life,、mm-hmm. especially as propagated by the Venerable Master Shingen, the 48th Patriarch of the Linchi tradition of Buddhism,、yes. who has given Chan Buddhism its humanistic approach. That's true. And the Buddha Way online radio program is a project of the Fokuang Shan Temple, established by the Venerable Master in Kaohsiung, Taiwan, in 1967.、Oh. And it has so many chapters all over the world. But this program is being hosted by the Fokuang Shan Mabuhai Temple in Manila, Philippines. That's right. Thanks for the information, Johanna. Yes, Fo Guang Shan means the Buddha's light mountain,、mm-hmm. and as the phrase suggests, it aims to bring the light of wisdom to all sentient beings all over the world. Yes. You know what? If our listeners are curious about what this all means, then keep tuning on us as we discuss and explain to you what Fo Guang Shan is all about and how Buddhism as a way of life can enhance every life and help each one into the path of enlightenment. Whatever political or religious belief you have, or whatever status or position you hold in life. That's right. And today, however, we are celebrating the year of the rabbit. Woohoo! It's the year of the rabbit. Uh huh. And what sign are you, Matt? Well, I was born in the year of the pig. How about you? Me in the year of the monkey. Oh, okay. <laughs>、yep. Cool. But I wonder what the Buddha's zodiac sign may be. Oh well, he couldn't have one because the Chinese zodiac system started with him. Oh really? Ah,、wow. uh-huh, that's true. Well, it is said in one legend that the twelve zodiac signs in the Chinese horoscope system originated when the Buddha invited all the animals to his kingdom. Is that so?、Mm-hmm, that's right. However, only twelve of them showed up. Oh. Well, first the scurrying mouse, followed by the lumbering ox,、mm-hmm. and then there was the tiger, the rabbit,、wow. the dragon, the、uh-huh. snake, the horse,、oh. the sheep, the monkey, the、uh-huh. rooster, the dog. And finally, the pig. The Buddha, of course, was very grateful to these animals, and from then on, named each year after each of those animals, following the order of their arrival. Well, I didn't know that, man.、Mm-hmm. That's、mm-hmm. that's why the Chinese system goes on twelve-year cycles. And you know what? The Buddha also said that the people born within a year would display the personality of its ruling animal and derive great influence from it.、Mm. So that means if I was born in the year of the pig, then、mm-hmm. I'll I'll be influenced by a pig. <laughs> I don't know, but that's an interesting topic, there, Mads. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least that that's what the legend says. I think it's because the popularity of the Chinese zodiac system happened simultaneously with the spread of Buddhism in China. China. But history tells us that the Chinese invented the system more than three thousand years ago, helping them mark time in days, months, and years.、Um, and you know what? The zodiac system is still very important to historians because they help determine the dates when a particular document or artwork was made.、Mm. You know, in the ancient times. Signing your name as an author of a work wasn't fashionable. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they instead put their zodiac insignia on their work. Otherwise, the work's theme reveals the zodiac year in which it was made. Oh.、Mm-hmm. Oh, and by the way, early Buddhist texts claim that the Buddha Siddhartha Gautama was born on the full moon of the sixth lunar year.、Uh, so that makes the zodiac sign.、Um, wait, what? Mouse, ox,、mm-hmm. tiger, rabbit, dragon, the snake. Oh, the, the Buddha was born in the year of the snake. Wow! Again, such an interesting information, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, but what strikes me, however, is the idea of the whole astrological system,、uh-huh. or shall I say, zoological system?、Oh, Since、yeah. you know, unlike the Western zodiac system, the Chinese one doesn't look up to the stars, but To animals instead. Yeah, that's true. Oh, well, you have a point there.、Huh? Yeah, but 
So anyway, the Chinese zodiac system has been identified with the Buddha. Uh huh. And I think we can derive a lot of insights from that particular legend. That's true. Yeah. For instance, that the Buddha was such a、um, you know an open host. Imagine inviting all the animals. Yeah, I agree. Yes, and the more important thing is.、Mm-hmm. Even when he was rejected by who knows how many animals,、yeah. <laughs> instead of feeling angry or being saddened, he was still very grateful to those who came.、Yes. And what's more, he honored them by naming the years according to their species. Yes, and we all know that the Buddha is a model of compassion. That is true. The ultimate value that Buddhism is trying to spread.、Mm-hmm. So perhaps it is just fitting that our subsequent programs will feature the life of the Buddha. Yep, the one who started this great tradition of compassion,、mm-hmm. known all over the world as Buddhism. Definitely, Mads. But today. In this pilot airing, we are happy to have with us Professor Lenny Garcia.、Oh, great! I I heard she's a good professor. Yep, and she is a professor specializing in Eastern philosophy, and who will be interviewing the head abbess of Bogongshan, Philippines, Master Miao Ting. Oh, who? That's my idol. Uh huh. Everyone's idol. Yes. And so perhaps we shall begin. So, dear listeners, don't go away. And here's your chance to learn all about Fo Guangshan from the head abbess herself. <laughs> 